Welcome to this fun interview session. Today I'm talking to Kate Snow from Math with Confidence, and we are hoping that she will give us a little bit of encouragement about math with our homeschool students, because that can sometimes be a great source of frustration or pain or fear and trepidation amongst homeschool moms. So Kate, thank you for joining me. And before we dive into all the interview questions and stuff, I'd love for you just to tell us about yourself, your family, your business, whatever you want to share. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me today, Erin. I do hope that I can help uh, encourage some homeschool moms to know that they can teach math well. I really believe that that's something all moms can do. And I am looking forward to helping to encourage some moms in doing that today. Um, so... Oh, so I have two kids. They're 15 and 12. So we are on the older side of things. My son actually gets his driver's license next weekend. So we're very excited about that. Um, Welcome I, to that world. Oh, it's, <laughs> exciting and scary all at once. Yes. <laughs> um, and I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I have um, been involved in education in many different ways. Uh, I have been a classroom teacher, I've been a curriculum developer, I've been a homeschool mom, I've been a tutor for homeschool kids, I've run co-op classes in math. Um, so I've kind of taught a little bit of everything in the math mm -hmm. world. And um, these days I focus on writing the math with confidence curriculum, which is my full math curriculum for kindergarten through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. um, it will be eventually through sixth grade. We'll have third grade releasing this spring and then another year uh, each year. And I'm also the author of Preschool Math at Home and the Math Facts That Stick series. And I just love um, kind of giving moms the tools they need to teach math well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I found you through Preschool Math at Home. Um, my, I have a big gap in kids. So I have two that are 18 and 16. And then I have a six and a seven-year-old. I can't keep up with their ages. The six and seven year <laughs> And so a friend of mine had kids that were just a little bit older than my younger batch. And she had found you, I don't know how, but she had found preschool math at home and fell in love with it. So I, when I was developing general and classical preschool, she was like, this would be like, it's so complimentary to what you're wanting to accomplish. That's like super age appropriate, developmentally appropriate, hands-on learning. And I had my, one of my daughters has um, dyscalculia and the other one just like, wasn't a math person, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we struggled with both of them to varying degrees with math. So I was probably more scared than the average homeschool mom when it came to math. And so preschool math at home, I knew I learned so much through my daughter's learning disabilities. And I knew that I wanted her to have like concrete number awareness and like be able to manipulate numbers in her head and know her math facts with part, you know, know their mm -hmm. math facts with perfect fluency. And that those are the building blocks for all later math. So preschool Absolutely. math at home and then kindergarten math with confidence were just like the perfect foundation for us, for my kids and the way that they learn. Um, I am happy to announce that my boys are much more adept at math just naturally. And I think there's a big, there's a nature versus nurture type thing, mm -hmm. I think, when it comes mm -hmm. to math. Um, so let's see. Okay. I would love to know how you first started, got how you first decided to start writing curriculum for homeschool families. Sure. So uh, this was oh, probably a good eight years ago or so now when I was actually teaching my daughter preschool math. Mm -hmm. um, and we were going to a homeschool co-op. And, um, you know, we'd have the usual lunch table conversations uh, with all the moms about what curriculum we're using and what we're doing, what we're doing in our homeschools. And I realized how often the moms were struggling with math. And my friends were just these wonderful, bright, intelligent, thoughtful women. They were just nervous about teaching math. They're not sure what to do. They're hitting like bumps in the road and not quite sure how to get over them. Yeah. Um, and so I spent a lot of time at the lunch table talking about math since I had a background as a math educator. Mm -hmm. um, and it just made me think, oh, I bet there's a lot of moms out there like that. Um, and so I actually started my blog as like a New Year's resolution that year. Like I wrote one post and sent it to, you know, just like my friends <laughs> basically. And I think this was New Year's 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started blogging there. And then my very first book I wrote was Preschool Math at Home where I really just took all the things I'd done with my daughter during her preschool years and kind of organized them, wrote them down, and then helps moms understand with the notes in that book about, you know, what they're doing, what you're trying to accomplish, what to focus on um, to really build that strong foundation. So that was kind of how I got started. Um, 
and it's been really fun growing from there ever since. I love that. And so a little aside is I would love to know your background with math. Like obviously you became a math educator. What is it about math or what drew you to kind of to mm. that field? Because those of us that are word people are like, how can anyone <laughs> ever want to do math on purpose? That's for sure. Well, you know, I kind of got into it because I wanted to teach math. So I majored in math. I have a regular math degree. Um, as mm -hmm. my primary undergraduate degree, but then had an elementary education certificate on the side. Mm -hmm. um, and what I really love about math is the fact that it does all fit together. You know, there mm -hmm. is a logic to every single thing we do in math, even yes. though that doesn't always come through in the way it's taught to people. You know, like so many of us learned just to you know, memorize procedures or, um, you know, just have, it was kind of a jumble of different things or like different tactics, but not really one cohesive whole. And I love people see like the cohesive whole and the beauty of the patterns and the organization mm -hmm. of math, um, because that is, I think, what gives people confidence with math, you know, yeah. fundamentally is being like, this makes sense. I might not see it yet, or it might take me a little bit more to see where this all fits together, but yes. it can all be figured out. This isn't like some magical information that some people know and other people don't <laughs> you right, know, right. Out if you don't know it um and so i love is that where the name came from math with confidence that is it was really from both um, wanting kids to learn math with confidence that they mm -hmm. see how all those interconnections happen that they mm -hmm. understand where it comes from they feel good about the actual doing of the math as well you know because you can yeah. understand things Till the cows come home but if you can't actually do it that you don't feel very confident in doing math right. either. <laughs> so it's a balance that understanding and that uh skill yes uh, but then i also want math i also decided to name it math with confidence because it's also for the moms you know mm -hmm. i want the parent teaching the book to be teaching math with confidence and i put a lot of effort into um, not just telling you what to do but helping you understand what you're doing in the yes. curriculum so that um so that you can teach the math with confidence too and that when you hit a roadblock you have some ideas of things to try or you know okay mm -hmm. it's okay if we don't get this quite yet because i see in this checkpoint it's okay if this isn't mastered yet so to give a lot right. of guidance and scaffolding for parents um, as they're teaching and that helps a lot if you're not a math person. Um, I never struggled with math. I could follow the steps. And so I'm a very good direction follower. And I went all the way through trigonometry in high school. Um, but I never knew what I was doing. And if you ask me today, what is trigonometry? If my life depended on it, I could not be. <laughs> but I got an A in the class. Mm -hmm. And so I realized as I began to homeschool my own girls with their math and stuff that like, I could tell them the steps and because my natural bend is toward a person that is like a follower of steps. And as long as I can understand the sequence, then I'm in good shape. My girls struggled with their memories, uh, specifically my dyslexic daughter. And so what she, since she struggled with her memory, she could not memorize the steps like mm -hmm. I could. And so, but I realized in all the other ways, they were just like me. Like we're very like, emo I, I always think about it. Like everyone that I know that loves math and just loves how it fits together. They're very logical people. And my mm -hmm. husband's a very logical person. He loves math. He's a human calculator. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't understand why none of his children are like him. Um, <laughs> but I, I like, we all just have like, we operate out of more of an emotional center in mm -hmm. our brain. And so it's kind of like, then, then the math experience is not about the logic of how it works out. It's about how it makes us feel. Right. And that's, yeah, such a, and that's a huge part. part. Yeah, yeah. And that's such a big piece for any subject, right? Like if you don't mm -hmm. care, yeah. you know, if that doesn't just make your heart sing, that logical piece, right? Then you need other hooks into it, right? Yeah. And I think that's yes. where a lot of curriculum go wrong, where they expect the love, that logic to be the thing that carries kids through or keeps their motivation yeah. up. And that's just not the case for a vast yeah. majority of children. Like children who are very logically oriented, they can use basically any math pro program in Correct. their life. <laughs> you know? yes. But for kids who don't have that as sort of their driving force, they really mm -hmm. need a lot more. Um, they they need to find fun and like even joy in the math that isn't just about that logic, right? Yes. Because like, then they're looking forward to the experience of the math lesson with mom, mm -hmm. not necessarily like getting to figure out the solution to the problems. Because right. I do have my younger son is more like, I want to figure this out. Out. Mm -hmm. he, he has the logic and the desire, just like his dad, to figure out how things work. And then all my other kids are like, 
like I either love math because it's fun with mom, you know, mm-hmm. or I hate it because she is frustrated at me. And so <laughs> having yeah. having that built-in guidance, like the checkpoints that say, you know, it's okay that they don't, and if they don't get this yet, because that's the big thing. When you're an in, when you're a homeschool mom, you cannot know all subjects. You can and not. so, I, if I'm instructing my children in writing because of my writing experience, I know what's normal mm-hmm. and and what we've got to stick with until they get it, and what it's okay. Like, oh, well, this part's okay. We can just skim and we'll come back mm-hmm. to it later because right. it, it, it does operate that way. You have things that you have to get down, and things that are just mm-hmm. like, well, we can come to it later. And right. so, I have confidence in that when it comes mm-hmm. to writing. But with math, I'm like. I don't know if, mm-hmm. if this is a thing we can skip or if we have to stay here for years until they get these skills. Right. Um, and so that is very helpful to mom just so as a personal encouragement. So that you know, <laughs> yes. Like that is super helpful to those of us that just Thank do you. not operate mathematically mm-hmm. <laughs> at all. Um, well, I think that's a big part of what the games like. I'm big on math games. Anybody who's done any of my programs will know that there's tons of games in there. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that is to make math more interesting for those kids who may not care about the logic. You know, if you like, you might be like, oh, great, I'm comparing three digit numbers. You know, I don't care. But if you're playing war and you're trying to make yes. your numbers as big as possible, suddenly there's something to care about there. So yes. even if the yeah. logic of, oh, we can look at the hundreds place first and then the tens place, even if that doesn't really make you that excited, um, yeah. that there's something else to get in there. Um, and I have found with my kids as well, when you have a game, they, um, it takes them into a different, they operate from a different part of their brain mm-hmm. when they're playing a game. And so I can have a child that is absolutely struggling to fill out a, you know, a page of math facts. Mm-hmm. They just, they're overwhelmed by it. It's intimidating. They're scared to get one wrong. Like they just operate from this different place in their brain, but I can pull out some swamp and they're like, their math facts are instantaneous. They're not mm-hmm. counting on the fingers. They're not sweating it. You know, they're wanting to get a higher number than their brother. They're uh-huh. praying for like two sixes on the die, you know, and a plus yeah. sign and not a subtraction. And so they, it, it does make a very big difference. And like, even to this day, I have kids that they can do math when it's needed, but they still struggle with a worksheet mm-hmm. in front of them. It just is intimidating still. Yeah. And just having things that are connected to a real life situation, it brings so much more mm-hmm. meaning to that math, right? And so yes. the game brings meaning, but also like a lot of what I do in math with confidence is also trying to ground the math and things that are like relevant to kids, you know, so yeah. practices like plain old, like in second grade math, uh, no, actually in third grade math, um, you know, we practice adding and subtracting four digit numbers, which is really mm-hmm. kind of a tedious slog. Um, but then we also have a lesson where it's a, well, and we do lots of games. So like there's a snowball fight where you actually throw the numbers at each other and things like that to make it more fun. But then yeah. there's also a lesson on um, like finding the differences between dates and history. Like when was the mm-hmm. telescope invented? When was the telephone invented? How long ago was that? And yeah. so kids love it when they can use that math then to do something that they're genuinely interested in that's actually helping right. them find something interesting and not just not just cranking out problems. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I feel like we answered my first question about making math lessons a joy rather than a slog. That that seems to be very much focused on like relational games, things mm-hmm. like that. Like if your child's not enthralled with just the logic of math, then um, do you have any advice for a parent that has been struggling with math with their child and it has become a place of contention and the child's like not wanting to do math anymore how can you then transition back to a joyful once you've already like you've kind of like destroyed your child inadvertently but Mm -hmm. we all kind of do it in homeschooling at some point we will destroy the joy (laughs) of our child in a subject Mm -hmm. on accident with our own Mm -hmm. issues and so we want to fix that and bring them back into a joyful relationship with math so i think the my main advice is to have a little breather, not for too long. You don't want to get out of, you know, the habit of math lessons, but certainly to just put the book away for a little bit and do some, you know, real life math type things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
make a recipe, um, you know, like use some fractions there, make mm -hmm. up some word problems about your family, you know, to do some things like that are just with no book at all for a little bit, or even to just put math aside for a week or two. Nobody is going to fail the SAT because they had did two weeks of no math, you know? Right. <laughs> but, yes. um, and then, and then either to, I think the, the thing that often the, the problem that people run into is that the math is too hard in some way. And so to go mm -hmm. back to a place where everybody felt secure, you know, to yeah. not feel like you have to push, push, push ahead, but like, where did we, where did we kind of lose the thread here? Is there a place like where, you know, we started this unit on fractions, but um, you weren't really understanding the idea of the equal parts at the beginning. Let's go back to that. So sometimes you can just start over with the same program, but you just need to go back a little bit and mm -hmm. find some you know, find a, a solid ground to stand on. Um, yeah. But if you're both at the point where you are looking at that book with dread, like there's just too much bad feeling, I think it's often best to switch around at that point. Um, yeah. Or about what wasn't working about this program for us. Right. Um, and to start something new. Um, people are often very anxious about changing math programs in the homeschool mm -hmm. world. And I really understand where that comes from. But I want to encourage people that if something is not working for you, it is yeah. so much better to switch and, you know, take the time, do the placement test, look at the cook table of contents, make sure you start in the right place. Mm -hmm. um, but it is worth it to not have to not be stuck with a curriculum you don't like for maybe not even this year, but for more years to come, just because you're so scared about the gaps. Um, yes. you, know, yeah. you can you you if you are anybody who's thinking hard enough to think about that, you will figure it out. <laughs> like I have full faith yes. in your ability to look at that table of contents and think, oh, we didn't do that. Let's go back to that. Okay, we'll do it, you know. Right. Yes. And I've always encouraged like if not to curriculum hop when it comes to math, that's mm -hmm. in in reading instruction. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the key to that is to find something that works. So it's mm -hmm. find something that works and then stick with it to avoid the gaps. But simultaneously, it does have to be something that works that you stick exactly. with. And you may go through two or three things before you find what, you know, and, and mm -hmm. you'll figure out your teaching style, your child's learning style. And then you can keep going till you do find the one that is the good fit for both mm -hmm. of you. Yeah. And the other part about it is that I mean, I really want people to enjoy math, for it to be fun, for it to be joyful, for it to be a time of connecting. But mm -hmm. I think sometimes homeschool moms put too much pressure on themselves for everything to be awesome. You know? Yeah. And I so agree. That yeah. it's also okay to just have a good enough math program. Like if everybody's uh -huh. crying every day, that's not okay. If there right. are tears and frustration, something is not working. Mm -hmm. But that it's okay for sometimes a math lesson to just be a math lesson. And to say, yeah. okay, we did the math lesson and now we're going to go have lunch, you know, yeah. <laughs> and to yeah. not feel like it must be magical every day. I think that really sets our kids up for failure, right? It to think does. that it's going to be awesome every day. Yes. Um, and yeah. I think, I mean, I, I, years ago, I had a friend who worked, she had an only child, a very sweet six year old, and she worked so hard to make every lesson so much fun. And yeah. her daughter almost used it as leverage, you know, to say like, oh, that was boring. I didn't think that was so fun. And so yes. as if it were mom's responsibility to just make her life sunshine and unicorns all the time. And when she stopped worrying yeah. about it, everything got so much better. When she said, we're just doing this. I don't care if you like it or not. And she right. did yeah. like it. They were fun, thoughtful lessons. But um, yes. yeah, just, you know. I think we could have a... Yeah, I think we could have like a whole conversation about that because that's a soapbox <laughs> for me because I do think like we can make things magical, but if everything's magical, nothing is magical, mm -hmm. first of all, and our kids mm -hmm. will absolutely use it to manipulate us. And I made those same choices when I was in the early years of homeschooling. I wanted everything to be so fun and I wanted them to love it. And they absolutely used it to manipulate me when they just didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and you know, I mean, they're humans and they yeah, just, they are. You know, they're and just doing their thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. So, you know, uh -huh. so there are certain subjects. That's how we are with math and reading. Like, I found the things that work, and that's mm -hmm. what we're going to use. And I hope you can find a way to enjoy it. And we will mm -hmm. do some games and stuff, but sometimes we just have to get it done, yeah. you know. Sometimes and then the other things the can be fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. Yes. I and think there's some moms that need to hear that. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's really like the balance that I try to strike in math lessons is that there's something fun, there's something enjoyable, and mm -hmm. then there's some skill practice. <laughs> that you know, and again, my, like my workbooks are colorful, they're varied, they're interesting. 
but there's so much value in having that practice every day of skills you've already learned, just a quick little bit of yep. something that um, you've learned to make it really mastered, to make it really stick, um, because that's also part of what's really satisfying about reading or math, right, is when you yeah. have all those skills you need to do it well, then, yes. then you feel yeah. really good about it. It's a lot less painful. Absolutely. <laughs> and it builds confidence. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about math facts. Why yes. are they in this? I would love to like personally hear this. Not, I know why they are. So I probably know a lot of what you'll say, but to throw a wrench in it, um, if you have any experience with kids with math learning disabilities who really struggle with math fact memorization, mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful to hear about as well. Absolutely. And you, so Matt, like, as I'm sure most people watching know, you know, knowing the math facts is so important because they are those building blocks of yeah. everything else you do. Um, and that they're so important to have down because of kids working memories are so taxed by like the longer computations they do in the older grades. You know, when you're doing like that four digit subtraction, um, it's so much to keep track of the steps, to think about what you're doing, to think about whether your answer makes sense. Your working memory is just full with that part. And so you have to stop and think about 13 minus eight as well. Right. You know, if you take that whole detour to 13 minus eight and then come back and remember where am I, which place am I in, what am I doing? Um, it just makes, it's just too much. It's literally yeah. too much for our brains to be able to do that. Um, and so it is why I really encourage people to spend those early primary years, you know, first and second grade, really getting uh, the addition and subtraction facts down. Mm -hmm. And then third and fourth grade is spend getting the multiplication division facts down because they are just absolutely essential for yeah. those other things. Um, and you know, there's a lot of great strategies to use for that. I focus a lot on visualizations of understanding mm -hmm. strategies and techniques that aren't just memorizing or aren't just counting on your fingers, but something that helps you kind of build better conceptual understanding of the numbers as well, better number sense. Uh, but as you said, there's a small percentage of kids for whom no matter how much you do, <laughs> yeah. it, they, those things do not stick as well as they should. I still think it's very valuable to go through that whole process where kids mm -hmm. learn the strategies of if you're finding six times eight to think, okay, five times eight is 40. I need one more group of eight. That's 48 or, right. um, you know, because you learn a lot about how numbers work by going through the process of it. But if kids mm -hmm. have done all that work and get to that point where they do not have the facts memorized, I do think that's a really good time for kids then to use a multiplication or addition chart while they're doing um, yeah. those more complex calculations. Um, because yes. no one needs to be doing, you know, two digit times two digit multiplication where again, they're thinking, okay, now I have to go off and figure out nine times four and then here I'm back in the problem. And, it's just too much. And so to separate out those two processes, um, mm -hmm. to let a child use a chart where they can find what they need quickly and then get back to the problem, um, yeah. I think it's a really sensible workaround. And often kids end up actually learning the facts by using those charts yep. with a you know with a full year of ex you know, if you do that for a year or two, you'll have a lot of experience with those facts. Is that what yeah. you did with your olders who were struggled with the facts? With my eldest one, hers was less of a learning disability and more of like trauma from her early experiences with math in public school. And mm -hmm. um, so I know a lot of moms will probably wonder about this. And it's one question that I should have like written down because I have five questions in my head. I'm going to forget them. Um, but one of them was that about like the timed fact sheets. Mm -hmm. Now, my husband and I had like a little debate about this the other day because he was like, when are you going to start timing the boys on a fact sheet? And they're in kindergarten, first grade. And I was like, I'm never going to time them on a fact sheet. And he was like, I love those. Mm -hmm. I love to see how fast I could do it. And I was like, and what, what brought out the best in you crushed your eldest child's desire to ever do math because mm -hmm. as soon as you turn a clock on her you've turned the anxiety on mm -hmm. in her and it's feeling like she needs to perform in a certain amount of time it makes her literally panic and therefore mm -hmm. she cannot clearly think it shuts down the parts of her brain that would do math um and so that just created like and so we we moved away from those but she still just it became a permanent stumbling block for her mm -hmm. when it came math facts mm -hmm. um so finally around once i knew like she knows that multiplication is repeated addition and she knew some of them and we had spent like two years doing every possible program that there was every mm -hmm. incentive 
um, to learn the math facts, I just gave her a calculator at that mm -hmm. point. And same thing with my younger daughter that does have dyscalculia, that it was just like her working memory is that of a snail, bless her heart. Like mm -hmm. she is so smart, but she's also like cannot retain any pieces of information. And mm -hmm. when we would do math, we would do math one day. She's very logical. She understood exactly what she was supposed to do. She could sit there and do it at that moment. Mm -hmm. The next day, it would be like she had never done that math before in her life. Mm -hmm. And so we were always starting from scratch every day, and it made it very hard to build. And I, because I did not know how long I should allow that to go on, it went on a lot longer than it should have. Mm -hmm. Because I want, I thought if we do it long enough, just like with reading, because it worked with reading, like if we do it long enough, she'll eventually memorize these. Mm -hmm. and she did, it took her, you know, 10 times longer with reading stuff, but she didn't get it. With math, it just never stuck. And so finally mm -hmm. I gave her a calculator and then mm -hmm. we were able to go on up into algebra and stuff because she mm -hmm. stopped stumbling over the math fact issue. Mm -hmm. So do you have a rule of thumb or a tip that you could give to parents that's that their child is like genuinely struggling with math, with math fact memorization? And then while you give me this, you can also just kind of tell us more about your math facts that stick and how that actually works and, you know, mm -hmm. why it's effective or whatever. Um, so if you want to speak to any of that, I just. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I'm sorry <laughs> it was so challenging with your daughter. That does sound really frustrating. And, yes, it was. You know, that's a hard process to be picking yourself up every day and doing that. Yeah. Um, and, and for kids who are really struggling, like you said, you know, like she has dyscalculia, like that getting a diagnosis or having, you know, talking to somebody who can help you really sift through your kids' learning issues and figure out yes. where their strengths are and where they're going to need extra support right. is so smart. Um, it's not something to do lightly. <laughs> or you, you don't want to change around your instruction too lightly or kind of, kind of say like, okay, we're letting this go. But there are absolutely um, kids in situations in which that is the very best thing that you Right, mm -hmm. that help them understand like the underlying concepts of like, well, when do we multiply? When do we divide? How do we apply this to real life? We need to, we want you to be functional and like with all of your finances, with all the things you're going to need to do in your life. And so, yes, like, what let's make sure that we can get you there. Um, but there's not, you know, there's not a hard and fast rule, and because it really does depend on the kid, it does depend on the age. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but I think the thing is, the thing that I would really want to say is that if your child isn't mastering the math facts, don't feel like you have to camp out there for a year and can never, ever move forward with any other math. Um, sometimes people hear like, oh, well, they really need to know the math facts before doing second grade math or something. And then they just never get to second grade math or they feel like, yeah. oh, no, <laughs> don't do that. Um, keep on moving through, keep on practicing those math facts with younger kids, you know, five minutes a day can be real effective for a lot of kids and keep on moving forward and figure out what you need to do to keep moving forward. Yes. Um, and then as you get into that like, middle, that, like upper elementary, middle school age, yeah. that's where you start to see like, oh, but we've been working on these for years and this is not, you know, they're not sticking here. Um, that that's a really that's a definitely a point to stop before you hit kind of like sixth seventh eighth grade um, yeah all that infractions decimals business you know to stop and do an evaluation get yeah. some advice on that um and then a calculator can be a great way then to get around those procedural hurdles yeah and the other thing is you know it's um something i'm wrestling with as i write the fourth grade volume of math with confidence is you know, when's the last time I ever did long division? When's the last time I ever did two digit times two digit multiplication in my real yeah. life? Really never. Yeah. And so there's so much good learning that kids have as they learn these processes. You know, they learn mm -hmm. um, so much about what multiplication division mean. They learn so mm -hmm. much about uh, the distributive property, all these things that they'll need for their higher level math. But mm -hmm. in the end, whether you can multiply two digit numbers times two digit numbers may, you know, <laughs> you're probably not going to actually do that very much in real life. You're probably going to use a calculator. So right, a lot of yeah. it's about learning along the way, um, as opposed to that, that actual skill is really essential for real life. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. And with my girls, I want to say it was between around the fifth and sixth grade mm -hmm. that I was finally like, okay, 
they're just not going to learn this. And I did find, just as you said earlier, and it was my guess at, and hope at the time that if I gave them the fact chart or even the calculator, and they did those problems enough that just the punching it in mm -hmm. would become like a way of practicing the math fact. So mm -hmm. just because you introduce the calculator, and I, I would say like my experience would be that not to introduce it before the fifth grade, but mm -hmm. if you get to the fifth grade and they still can't remember six times seven or six plus seven, and it's stopping them, you know, it's overloading their working memory, as you talked about, and they can't advance into understanding two digit multiplication and mm -hmm. longer. That's when you need to be like, okay, well, we're going to use a calculator. We're still going to practice the math facts. We're going to use the calculator to advance further because I camped out way too long on mm -hmm. math facts. And I camped out too long on multi-digit division, uh, multiplication and long division as well. Um, if I could go back, I would not have stayed there. I would have just given the calculator for those things as well. Because mm -hmm. like you said, you know, both of my girls, like one's an adult, you know, and the other one is she's 16 and she has a job and she manages her own money and she has bills to pay and she, they have to keep up with those things. Like that's the most important aspect, being able mm -hmm. to like life application type math it doesn't mean it's not important developmentally to learn advanced math but mm -hmm. it does have to be like your child because as homeschool moms we can really get hung up on what's the best mm -hmm. thing to do am i holding them back am i failing them am i giving them like am i you know getting give them an issue by giving them a calculator should i keep pushing them like you know it's it's like you said it's really individualized but it's basically looking for an age Mm -hmm. I would say start maybe considering to introduce it in the fifth or sixth grade. And even if your child knows their math facts fairly well, but they struggle with their working memory, mm -hmm. a calculator can help them be successful at that point as well. And doing fewer problems is always a yeah. good option for kids like that too. Like one problem with serious focus can be better than six uh, that you yeah. kind of had to rush through. Um, but it's it's not a hill to die on. Um, and, and that's very Charlotte Mason. Are you really, have you gotten into the Charlotte Mason stuff at all? Do you like consider your math program to be Charlotte Mason ish at all? <laughs> ish for sure. Okay. <laughs> it's not, uh, I could, you know, it is, but I mean, I used a lot of Charlotte Mason with my own kids, especially in the younger years. I've read most of her books. And so yeah. they certainly have had a big influence on me as a, a home educator. And, um, yeah. and I do think, you know, the, especially the, the cultivating the what the science of relations, right? That we want mm -hmm. our relationship with math that is a positive one. Um, yeah. That they enjoy their relationships with numbers. Um, yes. The hands-on real life applications are, I think, are very, very much uh, Charlotte Mason adjacent. Uh, if not. Yes. Yeah, I was very Charlotte Mason-ish as well. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and when I read your curriculums, I felt very, like they were very Charlotte Mason adjacent. That's a good way to say it. Like inspired by and in alignment with her mm -hmm. philosophies without necessarily being like a replication of what she particularly prescribed because those do exist. And yes. mm -hmm. the, the scope and sequence of a purely Charlotte Mason math program is very different than what we expect from a scope and sequence of a kindergarten or first grade math program these days. So, mm -hmm. One way or the other, you just have to choose which path you want to go down mm -hmm. with that kind of thing. Um, but I love the the gentleness and the, sh and the brevity of the worksheets. That was one thing that drew me to it. Um, because like when I was using preschool math at home, I didn't know that you had the kindergarten program. And so I think, I don't even remember what we were using. We were using something and I wasn't super happy about it. So I posted it in my group and I was like, I'm not happy with this math. What is everybody using? And they're like, you have to try, you know, you recommend Kate's preschool program. You have to try her kindergarten program. I was like, oh, she has one, you know, so, <laughs> they told went, you. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was perfect for us because the lessons were short. And I mean, with two energetic little boys, you need those short hands on mm -hmm. lessons. And then I'm very big on a worksheet component because I think they need to, it's the, where the rubber, you know, kind of meets the road. They need okay. to be able to put things down on paper um, and answer the math facts without a timer. And <laughs> I love it. It, was like, it was enough to show they were proficient without it being mm -hmm. tedious or um, overwhelming, especially having like one of my boys has dysgraphia. So he can do, he knows it 
squirrely, he's like this with his math facts. Mm -hmm. when, when he starts to write the answer, it's backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most of the time, most the numbers are backwards. And it just takes like a lot more operating procedure. So just having like 10 to do versus a sheet of 30 makes yes. it easier. And no kindergartner yeah. needs a sheet of 30. No. <laughs> a little bit every day goes such a long way as opposed to just doing more than is necessary. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And the written work ramps up over the levels in math with confidence. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like that it starts, you know, I can't start it very low in kindergarten and then let kids yeah. work up from there. Yeah. And, and many families with a kindergartner either have older children that are still requiring a lot of time mm -hmm. um, in their day. So they need short lessons with their kindergartner or they have younger babies that are distracting them. So they still need just like, let's get this done in like five to seven minutes. <laughs> yes. That's what I loved about it, like, because I do each of the boys and they're reading and their math and mm -hmm. it just keeps it all very, like, manageable. Yes. Um, so what is the kind of design or how do you go about approaching math facts in your facts that stick program oh, that might so be maybe different? Mm -hmm. So facts, that, just to clarify for people, so facts with, I wrote the facts with stick series first. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a standalone supplemental program that anybody can use to reinforce the math facts. Um, you know, most math programs really don't spend a lot of time on the math facts. They kind of yeah. assume that the parents are just going to do the, or the teacher or whoever is going to just do this all on their own. Right. Um, and so it's really written for those people. Um, math with Confidence incorporates a lot of a lot of math fact practice. So you don't need both. Uh, you know, uh, it's just to make that clear. Um, okay. So math facts that stick takes each of the operations and breaks those facts down into small groups. Um, mm -hmm. and it teaches like one strategy for that group of facts, a game to practice that group of facts, a week's worth of worksheets to practice that facts, and then helps you move through them in a pretty like targeted and focused kind of way. And they're, mm -hmm. like I said, they're kind of meant to be an add-on of like 10 or 15 minutes of math facts a day, every day, um, mm -hmm. or, you know, six to 10 weeks, depending on whether it's addition, multiplication, uh, division, or subtraction. Um, but it's that focus, you know, focus time, focus strategy, and um, let's kids move on from there. So to really get those facts down in whatever kind of program someone's using. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to look at that one. Um, I have not because I have your other, like your, you know, your complete program. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I was like, well, I have her complete stuff. So I don't think right. I need the facts. And I, so I don't need it, but I still no. want to look at it. Unless you want to use it for summer <laughs> review. Some people use uh -huh. it that way as a just keeping okay. the aspects um, like fresh over the summer. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, but other than that, but yeah, sometimes people like ask, wait, do I need both of these if I'm using math with confidence? And you absolutely don't. So, okay. All right. Well, I have three closing questions that are just okay. fun. Okay. Great. So, um, like one's kind of deep, but I, I just thought. <laughs> All okay. right. So, if you could read only one book for the rest of your life, you just had this one book that mm. you just could read over and over and over again. What would it be? Oh, that is such a hard one. Like I feel like I'm like I. I would probably say the Bible, but it feels like a little too much of like a gimme. You know, I'm trying to come up with yeah. something else. I thought about excluding the Bible. Yeah, so I feel like that's Bible a different category. One other book. Yes. Yeah. Oh, can I take the collected works of like Dickens, like a really big book? Yeah. I'll take, <laughs> yeah, we can do a collection. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do love classics. So I'd probably yeah. go something along that line. I also love yeah. Anne of Green Gables, but I don't know if I could read that ever, like as my only book for the rest of my life. That might be. Yeah, maybe the volume of the Anne mm -hmm. of Green Gables, mm -hmm. you know. I do have a volume of, of all of Jane Austen's books, like in one book on tiny print. Yeah. And that is a yeah. book I go back to very often. So if I pick one thing off my shelves, I'd probably go with that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah, I have a Narnia that's like all of them in mm -hmm. one book. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, okay, if you could tell your brand new mom self, like if you could go back and talk to mm. yourself when she was in the throes of the earliest years of being a parent and even being a homeschool mom, what would your like number one thing that you want her to really listen to be? Mm. Stop spending so much time researching and planning homeschooling. <laughs> Cause I spent, I'm, I'm an educator. I love this stuff, but I feel like yeah. um, I made it too much of a hobby for myself and didn't mm -hmm. spend enough time. I mean, it's 
all encompassing. It's wonderful. I loved that time with my kids. Um, but I wish I had let more things go and not been quite so invested in exactly having everything perfect, especially for like four year old preschool. You know? right. <laughs> and instead put that time into reading books for myself, going for walks with friends, just enjoying my mm -hmm. kids in the park, um, yeah. and not stressing over all those details. I think that is wonderful advice. I would probably say the same myself because I'm mm -hmm. a total geek and I love to just get obsessed with topics. So I've been obsessed with education for 15 years and mm -hmm. um, it definitely became, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it being a hobby, but at some <laughs> point it does have to be about your own personhood, not just about how to instruct your children. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Favorite beverage. Favorite beverage. Ooh, that is a really close toss up between good coffee and uh, IPA beer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Morning or night? Coffee or beer? Night. How do you make your coffee? Uh, just like plain old drip coffee. Like, I, I like, knew that you were going to, as soon as you said that you liked IPA beer, I was like, she's going to say black coffee. Like, yeah. that's, <laughs> well, I, you know, I do like a little cream. I like a little cream. A little cream? But what I like most is that my husband sets it the night before and so I can come uh, down and it's just all ready for me. And I just love that little moment good. of luxury every morning. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for taking this time to share Math with Confidence and all of your wisdom and your experience and the advice and everything. I think it's going to be really valuable. Um, I feel like most people that will be watching the video that are going to go out and search for information about a math program are people that are in the very beginning of their homeschool journey or they're very much struggling with a child with math mm -hmm. in their homeschool journey. So I think we spoke to both of those groups um with the advice and encouragement that you had and, and so i hope that it's really valuable so thank you so much for too. taking this time well thank I you appreciate so much. It. thanks so much for having me it was such a pleasure to talk to you i'm so glad we could meet this way and uh, i do hope it's really valuable for for your viewers so let me know if there's yes. anything i can do for you in the future and thanks i just really appreciate all your encouragement and for encouraging um the books in your curriculum it's um was such a delightful surprise to me to find that out a couple of years ago. And uh, I'm so glad yeah. it was nice to actually meet you and, you know, to actually hang out for an hour. Absolutely. And I mean, once I find something that I'm like, this is amazing and I'm so glad that it exists and that it is exactly the right thing that just beautifully aligns with what our goals are with general classical mm -hmm. stuff. Like, mm -hmm. absolutely. We're going to shout it from the rooftops because if we have people that want to homeschool the way we've designed general classical, then they're going to generally love some of the same things that we love. So mm -hmm. we were honored to be able to recommend that and hope you much success as you continue to release the third and fourth and fifth. So are you going to stop at sixth grade? Is that your well, goal? After, after sixth grade, yes. I'll release it okay. through sixth grade. Um, and so I'm third grade will come out this summer and then like the mm -hmm. pilot version of fourth grade is almost done. So I have kind of mm -hmm. two more years of full-time writing and then last round of revision. So I'm further, you know, it's kind of amazing to me to realize how far I'm on the journey at this point. Yeah, you're ha over halfway there. So yeah. we're, let people know they can find you at Kate, um, Kate's homeschoolmath.com. Mm -hmm. And you're also, uh, they can purchase it through the Well-Trained Mind mm -hmm. Press as well and through Amazon. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's super affordable. I mean, it is one of the most affordable math curriculums. If it's not the most, it is one of the most, because I think it's like, honestly, like with prom, sometimes I think you get the teacher's guide and the student notebook for like 30 bucks. And there are no other, and, and the manipulatives that are needed are always just things around the house. There's not, you don't need a bunch of stuff. You just need what you have on hand. So that's important for people to know as well. I want to plug that in there. Absolutely. That was a real important priority for me in writing the book is to make yeah. it affordable and easy to use and not require a bunch of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too, Erin.